In this video, I'm going to show you how to use circuitlab.com to evaluate a circuit that has a dependent source included in it. Here I'm going to be referring to problem number 13 from the mesh current method activity. I've gone ahead and built uh, the basics of this circuit in CircuitLab, and what I'm going to do is now add the dependent current supply, the voltage dependent current supply, that is required to complete this circuit. The dependent supplies are located in the left hand column and if you scroll down there will be a section called controlled sources. In this circuit, for example number 13, we have a voltage controlled current source. So I'm going to click that and drag that over to my diagram here. You'll notice here that this voltage controlled current source, in addition to the uh, current source terminals, it has two additional terminals, the positive and negative, or the high side and low side terminal. These are the locations where we are going to wire into the circuit the uh, voltage that is controlling this voltage controlled current source. So to make the diagram a little more readable, I'm going to um, flip my uh, resistor here vertically and referring back to this example we see that the controlling voltage VX is the potential that's developed across resistor R3. So in my circuit lab model I'm going to wire my controlling voltage to the node that connects to resistor R3. and down to my reference node right here. And then I will go ahead and wire up my um, current source. And as with all circuit lab models, we need to have a ground reference location. So I'll choose this to be the bottom uh, node here. In addition to that, we need to specify how the voltage across R3 is going to translate into the current that's provided by this current source. If I double click on this, I will have the option to change the name as well as this uh, K value right here. And this K value is called the gain transconductance. And you'll see that it has a um, omega symbol that's upside down. That's because transconductance is the opposite of resistance. It's the inverse of resistance and it's measured in units of Siemens. We have the transconductance specified to us by, or the how we convert voltage into current uh, is specified in the diagram as being two fifths. So two divided by five. All right, and once I do that, it's going to uh, calculate that value and tell me that the uh, transconductance of this is 400 millisiemens. All right, with that in place, now we can go ahead and select our nodes. I'm going to do node one node 2 in the middle here and node 3 over at the end and we can proceed to do our simulation our DC simulation as we did uh, previously so if I run DC, oh, I need to add my expressions sorry about that and I can run the DC solver and it's going to find the voltages at all of these nodes and of course I could specify that I want to understand how much current is passing through each resistor as well if I want to confirm the uh, results from the mesh current method. Now returning back to the build, let's say that this current source I1 was not a independent current source but a dependent current source that was controlled by a current somewhere else in the circuit. So I'm going to delete that and show you how we can implement a current um, a dependent supply that it depends upon a current somewhere in the circuit. So I'm going to replace that uh, independent supply with a dependent, excuse me, with a current controlled current source. And I'm going to place, rotate and place that in the circuit. And you'll see that the current controlled current source doesn't give you any place to attach um, some other component or some wire that's going to tell you about the controlling current. Instead, what has to happen is you have to specify that current by double clicking and, um, and specifying that in this box. 
In the upper right hand box there is a box labeled P, uh, little p, big P. Um, and this is, when you hover over it, it tells you that this is the control current. Because this is a current control to current supply, we know that we need a controlling current. And we specify that in the following way. We specify the current through one of the elements. Now, since it's already, since we already know it's a current, we don't have to put the I parentheses here. We just have to specify the name of the element. So the name of the element we're going to use is, say, R2, resistor R2. All right, and again, we have to specify the node. So this is where it's really important to understand the direction and which node is going to give you a positive value, which node is going to give you a negative value. All right, so I'm going to specify uh, node A right here. And um, in this K right, this box on the lower left is the current gain. So this is uh, the gain between how much current is passing through resistor 2 and to how many uh, amps of current are going to be provided by the current uh, controlled current supply. So um, I'm going to go ahead and specify this as a value of 2. All right. And once we've done that, we can go back to our simulate mode and we can run the DC solver. And based on this controlling current, it is going to, uh, to tell us, um, it's going to solve the circuit based on this controlling current. Again, the most important thing that you have to recognize here is that the resistive elements, um, as well as the supplies, have a node A and a node B. And one is con considered a, um, if current goes into it, it's going to be a negative value. And if current comes out of it, it's going to be a positive value. So returning to our build here, um, if I place a resistor and I place it in the default, um, I believe if current goes into the top, it's going to be considered, this is node A, it's going to be considered negative. Node B, if current flows through the resistor out of node B, it will be considered positive in direction. So you just have to be careful uh, when you use that to specify um, the current control sources. In addition, uh, later on in the class, we will be talking about using capacitors, inductors. Uh, we've already specified the use of diodes in labs, so we can use um, diodes, zener diodes, uh, and LEDs. Um, we've also talked about bipolar junction transistors and uh, different uh, um, MOSFETs. So we can uh, use CircuitLab to, um, to model the behavior of all of those different circuits as well as the ideal circuits that um, we have uh, looked at analyzing in lab. So this is a great tool to use. Um, to, to check your work and uh, to make sure that uh, after you understand how to do the primary analysis methods, um, these, this can be a great resource for uh, quickly um, evaluating designs.